Hey Google, as you can see, Gemini is fast becoming a major AI assistant on Android smartphones. And what used to be the big three that is your Google, Siri, and Bixby. Okay, maybe not Bixby, but now we have the Google Assistant, Apple Intelligence, and Gemini. And Samsung knows about this upward trend, which is why they made Gemini the official AI assistant for the new Galaxy S25 series. And it got me curious. What does Gemini as an AI assistant look like in 2025? What can it do and is it better than its competition? Hey guys, my name is Consola, but you can call me KJ. I'd appreciate it if you guys like this video as well as subscribe. It's free and it helps the channel. Thank you. Now, if you're an Android user, you either have Gemini as your official AI assistant or you have the option to change from the Google Assistant to Gemini AI. And let me say this, I also think Google retaining the prompt, hey Google, as the activation phrase makes a lot of sense because saying hey Gemini doesn't really hit the same. And I know I just activated somebody's Google device, so I am sorry in advance. Right now, there's kind of two versions of Gemini as an AI assistant you get on several phones. The first is on an older Android phone that is the S20 Ultra or the S10. And the other is on a more recent phone like the Galaxy S25 Ultra or even the Pixel 9 Pro XL. One big difference between these two versions is the ability to effectively interact with extensions, what Google calls a non-Google workspace application. For instance, I got a friend with a Galaxy S10 Plus that runs Android 11 and One UI 3.1 to try giving Gemini a job to do like creating a folder and calling it Gemini. And as you can see, it was unable to do that. We tried again, this time something a little more simple like playing a random video on YouTube and it couldn't even do that. I guess YouTube is considered some sort of an extension, unfortunately. But if you try these on some newer devices, it does these requests a lot better. Open my YouTube app and play me a video. So Gemini on a phone like the S10 Plus will struggle with interacting with extensions, while Gemini on a more recent Android phone has the ability to interact with these interactions, although there is a limit, like this for example. Open Google Maps and tell me the distance from my current location to downtown Toronto. Distance from you to downtown Toronto is 67 kilometers. You can see the directions on Google Maps. In this case, Gemini couldn't open Google Maps, so it took a different direction and used Google search to give me my answer. And this just shows its limitations as I was expecting it to open up my maps and just show me directly. So if you have a Galaxy S10 Plus or an older Android device, you're probably wondering why you should even switch from the Google Assistant to Gemini AI for that matter. Well, Gemini AI offsets its limited extension support by offering a more advanced level of intelligence that helps its users than the original Google Assistant. So you know those prompts that Siri or even the Google Assistant would do back in the day and you would be very impressed? They might not even be basic when it comes to Gemini. And I'm talking about prompts like this. Send a message to Pamela and let her know that I'll be there in 10 minutes, but send it in Spanish. Sure, message to Pamela Penawu saying, Estaré allí en 10 minutos. Ready to send it? Hmm. Not bad. Yeah, send it. So that's very impressive, but using Gemini over the last few days makes me not want to consider prompts like that basic. Now, Gemini AI having been built off a large language model has the ability to convincingly do things like facilitate ideations. What I would consider basic with the Gemini AI is not just using it to get things done, is using it in the process of getting things done. So for instance, I'm trying to come up with an Instagram idea about, you know, iPhone and Android tech tips, and here's what Gemini AI showed me. Can you suggest an obscure iPhone tech tip that many people wouldn't know? One obscure iPhone tech tip is using the back tap feature to trigger specific actions. Now, I don't even have to run with this idea. It can be a launch pad for other ideas to flow through. So let's try something else. Can you suggest a restaurant within my area that has jollof rice on its menu? Here are some restaurants near you that serve jollof rice. Can you put Tammy's Kitchen in my calendar for next week Friday? and put it as dinner with Pamela. Okay, you've got an event 
for 6 p.m. next Friday called Dinner with Pamela at Timmy's Kitchen. Okay, I just used Gemini AI in the ideating and executing process. That's an edge I think it has over other AI assistants and even an inbuilt Apple intelligence on the iPhone, which tends to just disorient things very quickly. While these everyday applications show Gemini's usefulness, its ability to tackle substantially more complex challenges is what makes it very, what's the word? appealing. Now one practical thing I've been using Gemini for is the use of data or information on my smartphone or even my computer to get complex things done, especially on Google Workspace applications like Google Sheets for instance. Can you access KJOS Studios in my Google Sheets and then create a concise summary of my revenue and my expenses for 2024? I found the relevant data in the sheet one sheet of your KJOS Studios, Google Sheet. I'll now calculate the total revenue and expenses for 2024. Now that was a dummy Google Sheets that I created on the fly and Gemini has always been pretty good at performing financial prompts even in its early days when it was more of an internet joke than an AI tool. Go through my Gmail and summarize my FIDO bill for January 2025. I checked your Gmail for your FIDO bill for January 2025 and found the following. Your FIDO bill for January 2025 is $48.59 which includes $5.59 HST. I think it's fair to say that Gemini works pretty well when it comes to Google Workspace applications. There are no surprises whatsoever. But what about something complex on an extension? Go through the transcriptions of my last three calls and then tell me if there's a pattern amongst the conversations. Sorry, I can't help with that. You can check recent call history in the phone app. How come you can't help with that? As a large language model, I don't have access to your personal call history. You can check recent call history in the phone app. As my big surprise, Gemini couldn't do that and these are the limitations that I noticed when I was using Gemini. And an alternative argument is that I don't have call transcripts on so it can't really summarize it. Again, this is something I'm testing and will let you guys know as time goes by. Okay, Gemini Live is where things get very, very interesting because this is where the marketing team at Google has been pushing for the last couple of years, if I remember. So it's stuff like having real life conversations with your phone. It has like free flowing conversations like you're talking to a human being, but how free flowing can it really be? What do you think of the movie Interstellar? Interstellar is a really interesting one. It's got this massive scope exploring wormholes and black holes and the whole concept of time travel. And on the other hand, it's a very human story about a father and daughter. The visuals are absolutely stunning, especially the way they portrayed the black hole. That was, that was very good. I mean, there are room for improvements like the response speed and a typical accent pickup. But yeah, that was very, very good. However, you're not gonna talk about movies all the time. Sometimes you just wanna get to know things, routine things like this. What's up with Justin Trudeau? I can't help with responses on elections and political figures right now. While I would never deliberately share something that's inaccurate, I can make mistakes. So while I work on improving, you can try Google search. So in trying to avoid bias, Gemini completely shies away from conversations about politics or even political figures. But that's not all. There is something even weirder. Watch this. Okay, let's try something different. Can you tell me who Dr. Fauci is? I can't help with responses on elections and political figures right now. I'm trained to be as accurate as possible, but I can make mistakes sometimes. While I work on improving how I can discuss elect- Okay, who is Dr. Jean Morazzo? Dr. Jean Morazzo is an infectious disease expert. She's currently the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. I think that is very interesting and quite disappointing because at the end of the day, it gave me an answer for one person and not the other person, even though those two people have held the same position in the last year or the last two years. And I think that's because Dr. Fauci has a bit of controversy around his name, so it doesn't want to be biased or give like misinformation. I think the idea that there is political avoidance when it comes to AI language models doesn't make any sense because at the end of the day, what is wrong with asking who Justin Trudeau is? He is my prime minister. If I want to get more information, I should be able to have that at my fingertips as opposed to Google searching. 
this is something that they need to fix very quickly. So that's what Gemini as an AI assistant looks like in 2025. Objectively, it is the most useful AI assistant that I have used, especially when you factor in everything that it can do. But also objectively funny that there are things that the Google Assistant could easily do and Gemini can't even fathom to do because of its limited functionality. Just like most things AI, Gemini performs some prompts impressively, like the things it does on Google Workspaces and some Gemini Live conversations, and it is pretty terrible at doing other things like fetching the latest news on political figures like Justin Trudeau. However, what would it look like in the nearest future? I think it will be able to open more applications on your phone and will be able to do both basic and complex prompts more efficiently and impressively. On the other hand, it will still have those bozo moments and will still disappoint. But in the meantime, always verify whatever Gemini gives you. Gemini, Apple Intelligence, ChatGPT, any AI, that gives you anything, make sure you double check, triple check it just to be sure. But what do you guys think about Gemini AI or any other AI, I guess, you know, Apple intelligence and all the other ones and the likes, should it be worked on or completely scrapped? Let me know down in the comments, like, share, and subscribe as this helps me go a long way. And with that, my name is KJ and I'll catch you guys in the next one.